Chevrolet Captiva 2006 2015 years of release. Good day, if you are wondering is it worth buying a Chevrolet Captiva and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. Faded chrome parts and faded paint are Captiva's faithful companions. If we are talking about the oldest specimens, then it's quite possible to find foci of rust on them. First of all, when examining, it's worth assessing the condition of the trunk lid, the edge of the roof, over the windshield, the hood and parts covered with protective plastic linings. It's worth looking under the car too. Captivo subframes are among the first to win corrosion. The silver painted plastic looked fancy on the new Captivos, but it had already scratched up on most used models. Fortunately, repainting the plastic or covering it with co colored film is now quite inexpensive, but the solution to the problem is with the air conditioning system will require much more funds. The fan motor and damper drives turned out to be too flimsy, which is why they rarely serve more than 50,000 km. 5 to 7 years is the period after which the electrical contacts in the Captiva begin to oxidize and must. As a result, warning lamps on the front panel now and then flash, indicating a particular malfunction. And this is the best case. At worst, the car will simply turn into real estate, which only a competent electrician can return to life. When buying a used Captivo, you should definitely contact the services of such a specialist. In addition, on diesel Captivos that were produced until 2014, a frankly unsuccessful wiring harness was used. It connected the battery, alternator and starter. The contacts on the starter gradually weaken, after which they begin to oxidize and melt. And ultimately, it all ends with the need to replace the starter and electrical wiring. Before restyling, the Captivo was fitted with a 2-liter diesel unit. Finding such a copy on the secondary market is almost impossible. After the upgrade, it was replaced by a new 184 horsepower 2.2 liter turbo diesel engine. Despite the fact that this engine had not been installed anywhere before Captiva, the power unit, which was not the easiest in technical terms, turned out to be reliable, but not devoid of many childhood illnesses. The rubber damper of torsional vibrations of the crankshaft pulley turned out to be not very durable and quickly fell apart. After that, the dynamics of the car became worse, the appetite increased, and the operation of the engine was accompanied by a loud knock. After purchasing a used Captiva, it's best to replace the pulley preventively. Fortunately, the price of this part is relatively low. Constant driving through city traffic jams can kill a particulate filter in just 50-60 thousand kilometers. So the owners of diesel Captiva should make it a rule to go to free country roads from time to time. During operation you cannot do without cleaning the EGR system. A valve stuck from deposits will definitely not work for the diesel engine. The latter, by the way, turned out to be real muddy, since oil leaks could occur even on practically new cars. Unfortunately, General Motors has done absolutely nothing to solve this problem. The owners themselves do not seek to eliminate oil smudges. Most people prefer to trivially control the oil level and top up if necessary. Chevrolet Captiva gasoline engines are simple and reliable. Before restyling, a 136 horsepower 2.4 liter engine was installed on the crossover. Structurally, this unit has a lot in common with the Opel motors of the 80s of the last century. If you do not pay attention to the small return, then there are no serious complaints about it. The cast iron 4 is able to hold out 500,000 km, which today can be considered an excellent indicator. Of the frankly weak points, only a plastic valve cover can be noted, which, as the mileage increases, begins to leak oil. In addition, you should be prepared for the leakage of the rear crankshaft oil seal. The timing belt on a 2.4 liter engine should be changed every 60,000 km. Together with it, it will not hurt to update the water pump. After the upgrade, a gasoline engine of the same volume was installed on the Captiva, but with an aluminum cylinder block, balance shafts and the timing chain drive. As soon as the mileage exceeds 100,000 km, the condition of the timing chain will have to be monitored very carefully, otherwise the new engine turned out to be far from the most problematic. As for the dripping water from the drainage groove located under the windshield, only the engineers are to blame for this design miscalculation. Meanwhile, moisture falling directly on the intake manifold can in the long run lead to the fact that the cast iron parts are covered with cracks. Until 2011, a 3.6-liter gasoline engine was also installed on the Captiva. The engine proved to be very sturdy and reliable. The only thing that can make the owner seriously upset is the cost of replacing three chains in the gas distribution mechanism. Moreover, this process will be accompanied by the installation of four new phase shifters. Interestingly, the General Motors company did not define the interval for changing the chains on the 3.6-liter engine at all. 
experiencedly specialized services have proven that it's worth doing this at least once every 80,000 kilometers. The operation is not cheap, from 50 to 70,000 rubles. After the upgrade, the 3.6 liter engine gave way to a 3.0 liter unit. Distributed injection was replaced by direct, which is why after 150,000 kilometers, owner should be ready to replace an expensive high pressure fuel pump. Otherwise, the new engine turned out to be better than the previous one in everything. The timing chain drive, for example, began to last twice as long. Only the cooling system remained a weak point. Overheating the new engine as well as the 3.6 liter 6 is as easy as shelling piers. So the owners of Captivo should pay particular attention to the cleanliness of the cooling radiator, as well as proactively updating the pump with the thermostat. Around the third of all aftermarket offerings come from the Captivo with a 5-speed manual transmission. The latter serves up to 150,000 km without problems, after which the owners have to change worn-out synchronizers. The 6-speed transmission is much more durable, but it should be borne in mind that the motors with which it's combined relies on a dual-mass flywheel. The latter doesn't serve more than 200,000 km. A 5-speed automatic was also installed on pre-styling crossovers. With careful handling, it will last 200-250,000 km. The main thing is to constantly monitor the cleanliness of the transmission oil. After the update, the Captiva received a 6-speed automatic transmission from the General Motors company. The box is considered to be not the most successful, but it began to be installed on Captiva after two major upgrades, thanks to which it serves up to 250,000 km before overhaul. Naturally, the purity of the oil and cooling radiators should be monitored in this case as well. Regardless of the type of drive, the oil in the Captiva front gearbox will have to be changed at least once every 60,000 km. With all-wheel drive, there will be little more worries. You will have to periodically check the rear gearbox breather, which may clog. In this case, the seals of the main drive will begin to leak grease. The oil in the transfer case and rear gearbox should be renewed every 80,000 km. It's worth remembering that the Captiva driveshaft doesn't like dirt very much. If you often go off-road, repairs cannot be avoided. The crosspiece will withstand only 100-120,000 km and the outboard bearing is even less. The quality of rubber products in the Chevrolet Captiva suspension leaves much to be desired. Silent blocks in the rear suspension may not last even 40,000 km. The front stabilizer struts can withstand a little more, only 50,000 km. It's especially annoying when, due to low-quality rubber bands, you have to change the levers. As for the shock absorbers, they turned out to be extremely hardy. On average, they can withstand from 120 to 150,000 km. This is very good, since the rear shock absorbers are not cheap due to the right height control system. In the front suspension, wheel bearings will need to be replaced by a mileage of 80-100,000 km. The steering can also throw up a few unpleasant surprises. As a rule, after 100,000 km, the steering shaft crosses, steering rods and tips are rented. The steering rack was not very reliable either. This is especially true for pre-styling crossover. Choosing a Chevrolet Captiva is better to opt for a crossover released after the 2011 update. These crossovers have stronger suspension and fewer steering problems. Overall, the Captiva can be called one of the most undervalued vehicles in our aftermarket. Of course, the cloudless operation of this crossover will not be, but it will hardly present any global problems, the solution of which will empty the owner's wallet. If you're the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.